All right. So this September 21st, 2022 meeting of the Board of Ethics is hereby called to order. Um, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Yes, Madam Chair. Ms. Wint Pearson. Here. Ms. Tallison. Here. Mr. Goodstein. Here. Mr. Kelly. Here. And I understand Ms. Wilson is excused. You Correct. have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. All right, so I have a motion to approve the agenda as drafted. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, any opposition? Hearing none, we will consider the agenda approved. On to minutes of our previous meeting. Do we need a moment to review or are we ready for a motion to approve? Uh, can we get like a moment to review, please? Sure. Okay, I and mean, that's all I needed. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve? I move to approve the agenda, or I'm sorry, the minutes of the meeting of August 17th. Second. There's actually two sets of minutes. I apologize, you cut out for a second. Yeah, oh, there's there, two minutes. Are there two? Yeah. Sorry. Um, amend that motion to also add approval of the minutes of the special meeting of August 31st. I have a second. Second. Okay, all those in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 All right, minutes are approved. So moving on to the consent agenda. Again, do we need a moment to review before a motion is on the table? Uh, yes, please. Okay, take a moment and review. Where, I'm sorry, where is the consent agenda? I'm having it's I'm having a hard time. Starts at page nine. Oh, nine. OK, thanks. That's helpful. I just have to point out that that's an amazing name for our company, Yip Tees Apparel. <laughs> the one question I had was it seems like the person signing for the for the school district is not the name on the like someone other than Whiting is signing the letters. And I don't know who that is, but um, I assume that's sort of neither here nor there. It just was the only thing that struck me about the disclosures when I reviewed them. It is interesting, but yeah, I don't know that. Yeah. All right, do I have a motion on the table to regarding the consent agenda? So the for item to discussion. Yeah. I was just looking at the last two from our G boss friends. Um, from the from the members of G boss. I was just, I was just looking at those for a moment. What num what uh, what page number are you on? Page, I think, 19 of or starting at page 18 of the non confidential items packet. OK, I'm there. I guess I, I just have a I have a question. Maybe I should 
know this. So, for example, the the disclosure from uh, Mr. Edgington. So he says he, you know, he does have he does have a personal or financial interest. And what what is this board supposed to do with that disclosure other than other than look at it and see that he has made it appropriately describe what it is? I mean, what what are we looking for? I'm not I'm not remembering that I've seen one of these before. I'm sure I have, but Does my question make sense? I just don't know what well, we're reviewing. I think what we, we're reviewing, I think, to assess whether um, the conflict is manageable. In my recollection, when we have ever, when we've raised concerns about these, it's because we feel like there's something so insurmountable about this uh, that, or we need to make sure that it's clear that there is a process in place that we feel assured is not going to further the conflict, right? Like I recall like that we had concerns about the superintendent being married to the CEO of the telecommunications provider for the school district. Right. And was there actually a process that we believed could remove her from influencing that process? I guess my one question about this one is, it doesn't really say, I feel like in the past when we have had employees who've disclosed conflict or you know, board members who've disclosed conflicts, which isn't in isn't altogether too infrequent. I feel like it's pretty frequent with people who are um like on PNZ and uh, Zeba um some of the land boards. They usually put something in that says like, well, you know, if the issues from my company come before the board, then I will be I would have to recuse myself, and so I will plan to recuse myself from any matters that directly impact whatever my consulting company, my building company, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't specifically say anything here to that respect. Although it's an interesting question. I had recalled this question be being more oriented toward their duties as a public servant. And it looks like the question is actually, could the performance of your official duties in any way affect the contract? Oh. And didn't we just determine that it was possible that the actions of the G boss with respect to the like Gerwood Trails plan did have the potential to implicate the work done by Imagine Gerwood? Oh. I feel like Asia and I spent a whole long time talking or writing about it. <laughs> I, I think the problem was that they didn't they didn't sign this particular form, right? Wasn't that the issue before? Well, one of the issues was a failure to disclose. You're right. Yeah. And we said that there was it was possible that it would create like it did in fact constitute a grant held by an organization where they had a fiscal interest. You're correct that we did conclude that disclosure was necessary. I don't recall if we actually concluded that. I don't I don't think that we answered exactly this question because this was a little bit this is a little bit different, right? In fact, I think there I think we said in a footnote that we didn't we weren't actually talking in, a, in our opinion about one one fifteen one hundred B because that's. Mm -hmm. Right, isn't it? Yeah, no, I think the more I look at this, the more I think this is the question is, could. I don't think the performance of his duties. Well, let me look at the code provision. It's the public servant does not take official action that could directly affect the request for services, nor the award, execution, or administration of the grant, contract, or lease.
Well, I think that they, I think that they do cloud cloud. I think that two that one fifteen one hundred B two is satisfied because the request for services and the award of the grant come from the MOA from a process that's entirely removed from GBOS, right? Which I understand two A to be describing like the person who like the, he can't be he can't be involved in the grant making process that results in the giving of the grant to imagine Girdwood. And I don't understand the him G boss to have any involvement in the ARPA grant process for the MOA. So the grant is to be awarded from the planning department to Girdwood Inc. And he has no engagement with the planning department or role at the planning department. So I do think that it complies with 115 100 B2 because that is oriented toward his him having an official role in the actual giving of the grant. I, I, I agree. And if you look at the amount interest held, he writes a magic road officer, right? So he, he doesn't even have like a, a, a number to offer because it's not really the deal. The deal is, is that, you know, he is an officer of Girdwood, an officer of Imagine Girdwood. That is, that is his interest. It's not an actual number or a, or a cup or like an amount. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which it makes me feel like it's good. It, it works for me too. Yeah, I guess the, I guess for me the question is: Does GBOS have any influence on the execution and administ and or administration of the grant from planning? Yeah. And I I guess over the process of awarding the grant, but isn't the problem that GBUS could have could influence the size or scope of the project to be financed by the grant, which would af potentially affect the grant amount. Right? Isn't that the problem? Then imagine Girdwood might get more or less money depending on the scope of the project that they say they're going to do. Wasn't that the problem? To a it like contemplates. I think it contemplates the award, the public servant being involved in the drafting of the RFP or the award grant, like him having the having a dual role where because he's a public servant, he can control that the key gets money. And I don't think he like he can he does have and I think he's just, there's a separate issue where he needs to disclose in the course of G boss deliberations if there is a decision they're making that could potentially impact the work that is within Imagine Gerbit's purview. But I don't think it actually triggers the language of 115 100 B, which is the framework that the were asked to consider by the code for whether he can apply for acquire, receive, apply for, be party to, or have a personal or financial interest in a municipal grant contract or lease. Okay. I think so. I mean, the, the other alternative is we could go back to the two of them and ask for further explanation of why and how GBOS has no role in the things described in 115-100-B. 
two. Right. Just what so would would you say that Imagine Girdwood does not have a financial interest in the grant from From, from the planning department. Oh, they definitely do. They definitely have so a financial like, interest. Yeah. Well, if if Imagine isn't that the point? If Imagine Girdwood does, don't these guys have it too as officers? Isn't that what we've? Yeah, and that's why he's just closing it. But the code says that's allowable as long as the public servant does not take official action that could directly request the request affect the request for services, okay. which is the RFP that the muni puts out okay. for the grant. Or the award execution or administration of the grant that is given to Imagine Girdwood. So if okay. Mike has a role in the grant making process or, or administration process, then he can't apply for or acquire. Imagine Girdwood would be precluded from asking for the grant. Yeah, and so what does it mean to administer the grant? That's that's the only thing I wonder if GBOS would have a way of influencing the administration of the grant. We could ask for clarification again on the grounds that here we want to be because there have been concerns raised about the process. We want to be fully. I don't know. And I don't know the answer to. I assume that because they've said they're. That they do not, but they yeah. like that's the answer we'll get if we go, but they can provide more color uh, for that. Um, I, you know, I my like the, yeah. I'm comfortable leaving it alone, given that the word directly is in that provision. We're talking like. So the public servant does not take official action that could directly affect it. I mean, I think given that it seems like it, I, I think it's okay. They can't mess with the grant is basically what you're saying. GBOS can't mess with the grant. Yeah. I think that's probably right. Okay. Do so I have a motion to, to then approve the items on the consent agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And thank you for walking through this. Did, did you vote, Aisha, or did I just not hear it? Yes, I voted aye. Excellent. Sorry, my internet connection is a little bit spotty at a hotel in Colorado Springs that features crazy decor, including this crystal lawn here. Ooh, you can put candy in there. Yeah, there's some candy in there. Is it definitely? Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> wow. And it appears yeah. to be not raining, so no one feels too bad for you. Oh, Lucky. no, it's raining. It is raining. It started oh. as soon as I arrived in Colorado, <laughs> and it's slated to continue until I leave on Friday, at which point it will become 88 and sunny. So couldn't escape the rain, huh? Nope. All right, mm -hmm. on to our next agenda item, which let me scroll back to the top, I believe is um, the ethics complaint for potential violation 2022-2. For this one, we need to move into our separate uh, 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 closed session. Um, do I hear a motion to move into, I believe this is deliberative session. So are we, hold on. Are we, are we leaving this? A and B together, or do we need to do both just to avoid us going back and forth? I think too because B we have a guest if I'm remembering correctly. Um, oh, okay. We have the um, we have the requestor coming to answer any questions because there's a time critical nature to that one. So that the right. little mini invite we have that says request for advisory opinion 2022-05, we have to go there to make sure that we are able to convene with our guests. So we'll have to do two hops. Okay, got it. Okay, so then I think Terry moved move us into closed session so I can second. All right, any opposition? None, let's move into our closed session to discuss 2022-2.
before recording. OK, I move that we move into executive session to consider request for advisory opinion 22-5. Uh, Second. All right, uh, hear, any opposition to the motion? Nope. OK, hearing none, let's move into um, into our uh, other session dedicated to 2022-5. Yep. Hey, okay, I think we're back. Um, my only question, I'm now an hour late for my meeting that I need to go to, but I a quick question was, do we need to set a special meeting um, for uh, sometime before next month because of the sheer number of things we have outstanding, or do we think we're okay to remain open until next month? Well, I think we better meet in the meantime. Yeah. When when are we out, Terry? That's part of that part of the problem. Oh, that's that that's true. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Our terms and uh, board members, you're you're allowed by code to continue to serve for up to 120 days, um, oh. unless someone is appointed to uh, take your seat, and then that would take precedent. But um, you're not. Did we plan to meet in this window in two weeks on the 5th of October? I can do that. I can make that work. I think I can do it. I will try my best. Abram? You're on mute if you're talking. I might not be able to make that, uh, but I don't, think, uh, I don't know if my presence is necessarily yeah. required. I can't make it. That's Yom Kippur, guys. Oh, geez. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, well, do we want to do the next week, the 12th? I could do, I could probably do the 12th, yeah. I don't think I can do the 12th, I'm sorry. Um. Yeah, I probably couldn't do, I couldn't do the 12th either. Abram, would it be a gift to you if we met without you on Yom Kippur and got I, I, you yeah, out of the way? Cool. <laughs> if, yeah, I'm I'm cool with you guys meeting on on Yom Kippur. I, I don't mind. I just yeah, it's, obviously I won't be able to be there, but yeah, I don't. Understood. We could also do next week. We could meet a week from today. Um, next, next week works for me. Yeah, it doesn't. I'm sorry. When we're in, like, it doesn't work for me. Yeah, <laughs> you're like in high holiday season. Like, yeah, today. yeah. <laughs> Staffing from the clerk's office might be an issue next week as well. Okay, so let's plan for October 5th and and, um, and then we'll go to our regular scheduled meeting on the 29th and Abram will do some extra atoning for all of us. <laughs> I will, I will. <laughs> all right, uh, I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, we're staying adjourned. Thank you all. All right, thanks Becky. Thanks Bye. everybody. That was my Bye. Thank you.